So many people know the story of Buddy Baker being the first to go 200 miles per hour. But there's so much more to the story, especially centered around the race car. From its theft, to its part in a NASCAR boycott, to it fooling NASCAR and so many others for years after it was retired. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Hope everybody out there is off to a great week. Yeah, the story right here. Everybody knows, or most people should know, Buddy Baker, the first guy to go over 200 miles per hour on a NASCAR closed course. And uh, But this really isn't about him. This is about the car, because this car is one that legends are made of. Now, this all started in 1968 when Chrysler sent two 1969 Dodge Charger 500s out to California the Hot Rod Magazine to be photographed and uh, get this cool little article out there about the Chryslers because this was the same year, 1969, when Chrysler's guy, Richard Petty, switched over to Ford. So needed some excitement, needed some things going on there. So they sent these two cars out there. One of these cars was simply titled the Blue Car. And out of the drag strip, the Blue Car went down the quarter mile drag strip for a little over 13 seconds and everything seemed to be going really, really well. That was until the shoot was over. And the car just vanished. In fact, it turned out to be stolen. But it was later recovered in a very bad part of town. And uh, it had been stripped of everything at this point. The car was sitting up on blocks. All the drivetrain, engine, wheels and tires, interior, everything was stripped from it. Now, Chrysler had this car now that they didn't know what to do with. So they sent it to Nichols Engineering in Indiana with the idea to make this a test car for NASCAR testing. So Nichols Engineer went out there, put the roll cage in it, did everything to NASCAR specifications. And then at the 1969 Daytona 500, they decided, you know what, let's take this to the racetrack. And they got Paul Goldsmith to get behind the wheel. And things looked great. Car went out there, was fastest, and uh, everything was looking good until lap two, uh, 62, where the car crashed, and that was the end of the day for them. But at this point, they sent the car back, and this is where all the cool Additions were added to the car, the slope front end, the wing, everything else that they needed to make this car go faster. And that's what they did at Alabama International Speedway for the inaugural race at what is now Talladega Speedway. They got Charlie Glotz back behind the wheel, and he went out there and turned a lap of 199.466 miles per hour. And uh, it's pretty fast. Pretty fast for them guys right there at that time. And at the same time, there was a tire war going on. This was between Firestone and Goodyear, and a lot of the drivers, they weren't too cool with this right here. And uh, at that time, there was a professional driver's association, and they decided, we don't want to race like this. We want to allow time for everybody to test these tires. We'll come back and do it. But this new track at these speeds, we're going too fast, and we don't want no part of this. But Bill France said, nah, you're racing. If you don't want to race, go home. Firestone actually pulled out and said, you know what? We're not going to put any of our drivers out there. You want to run good years, go ahead. We'll forgive that and everything. But about 30 of the drivers decided they weren't going to race it. And uh, Bill France had some words for the drivers and actually told uh, some different ones that basically said, the only reason why you're not racing is because you're scared. And uh, per some other legendary stories, Bill France took a, a little fist to the face during this uh, right here. Other people say a little scuffle. Other people say it didn't happen. But um, either way, a little bit of craziness right there. Now, Chrysler still had a car in this race right here, but they got Richard Brickhouse to get behind the wheel of a different car. Now, a lot of people thought this was DC-93, uh, the car that Nichols made. And the reason behind this car's name and number right here is because in Indiana, cars had to be stamped with a number, and DC was for Dodge Charger, and 93 was for the production number to come out of the shop. So, again, a lot of people thought this DC-93 was the car that was out there, but it wasn't. It was, in fact, another car that they had brought to the racetrack. Now, what's interesting is following this right here, the car, never seen the racetrack again, was sent back and uh, just basically used for testing. And then in 1970, back at Alabama International Speedway, Buddy Baker got it behind the wheel out there, and I believe it was around lap 30. He went out, set a speed of 200.447 miles per hour. And uh, let's take a look. This was Buddy Baker, a top NASCAR stock car driver, on Tuesday of this week at the new 2.66-mile Alabama International Speedway in Talladega, Alabama. 
During runs conducted for transmission testing, Buddy became the first man in history to break the 200 mile per hour barrier on a closed race course. And you're watching him do it here in his winged Dodge stock racing car. Now, following all this as the years progressed, Chrysler was trying to get Richard Petty back in their grasp right there. And Richard Petty had the idea. He wanted the Roadrunner Superbird out there. He wanted the Plymouth back out there. He didn't want this Charger. So a lot of things happen where this Charger kind of just fell to the wayside. But in 1970, Bill France, as much as he was against all these cars and everything else, said, hey, well, why don't you donate the car to me? We're going to put it in the NASCAR Museum of Speed, and uh, we'll show it to the world. And Chrysler, with all the problems they had with NASCAR at that point, said, eh, let's think about it. And that's what they did for nearly three years. And then finally, in 1973, they decided to donate the car to NASCAR, had a big ceremony at Daytona Speedway, and the car went on display at the museum listing it as being the car that Buddy Baker drove. And, uh, well, that may have not been the complete truth. Enter into the story, Greg Kwiatkowski. Now, Greg had been to the racetrack in 1970, got to see these Superbirds and all these cool cars out there racing, and always had a passion for them, did a lot of collecting of them. And eventually, Greg went to work for Chrysler. And one of the guys that he worked with that he knew really well was Larry Rathgib. And Larry had actually worked on the original DC-93 program with this car. And one day over some conversations, Larry let it slip out that uh, too bad they don't have the real car. That got Greg's ears up, wanted to know what happened to the real car, which he said it went to Don White. Now, Don White at the time was a racer in USAC, also ran some NASCAR races, but the car was given to him to run in different forms of racing, which he did. He ran it sometimes with all the wings and everything else on it. Other times he converted it back to the original nose because at this time you could run the cars with the factory body a year longer than what NASCAR would allow. Basically, if a car was out of production, you could only run it for so long. But in USAC, they would let you run it a little bit longer. And that's what he did in many different forms, including on the dirt tracks. But then in 1973, he had to make changes from the old Charger body. And he put the 1973 Charger body on it and continued to go out there and race with this car on all different types of racetracks. But then in 1976, he retired the car. And this is where Greg decided to pick up the phone and call Don to follow up on this and go, hey, do you know what happened to this race car? And Don was quick to say, absolutely. It's sitting out behind the shop. Now, obviously, Greg, very interested in these cars, wanted it, offered to buy it. Don did not want to do that. He did not want to sell it. And Greg just kept every month calling him and calling him, calling him to see if he could get this car, to which he always got the ultimate answer of no. But then on one call one day, Don picked up the phone and said, I'm ready to sell the car. Now, Greg sent him a 35 millimeter disposable camera to take pictures of the car, which he did. Don sent him back. When they developed the pictures, they could see the original blue paint that had been covered by black paint on the roll cage. They could see the dash design, and they knew this was the DC-93. So Greg made his way down, bought the car, and took it back home. And this is where restoration started on this car. And uh, the cool thing about this is when he went out behind the shop, they were able to find the original nose off the Charger. They were able to find the wing which was in the shop. There was different parts of this car that were still there. Didn't have the original roof or doors or quarters, but the rest of the car was original. And this is where the story gets great. The car eventually landed in the hands of Ray Everham, which if you know Ray, you know his restorations of old hot rods and race cars are some of the best that there is in the world. And as you can see, this car was no different. It was restored back as much as possible to its race days with the original parts to make one fine looking machine. It eventually went up for sale and is still living on its glorious days past the racetrack. But this left the question, why now is there two of these cars? So, what was the car that's been sitting in this museum for all these years with people going by, and even NASCAR thinking they had the legendary DC-93 car? Well, see, what happened is back then, they had low-speed test cars and high-speed test cars. And there was a low-speed test car that was DC-74. And then there was a high-speed test car, which was DC-93. Now, Dodge felt pretty... Uh, Pretty not cool with Bill France at the time, because there's a lot of things going on right there that just didn't 
correlate with each other. And Chrysler did not like the fact that he was totally against their race cars, but now he wants it. He wants to show it off. And uh, so Chrysler said, you know what? We'll give you that car. And what they did was they took the DC-74, which at the time was a low-speed car that was red with a number 71 on the side. And they realized, all we got to do is slap some paint on this, change a couple things, and we'll convince them it's the car, and that'll be that. And that's, in fact, what they did. And uh, pulled a fast one over on Bill France, who at the time, there was a lot of things going on with a lot of problems right there. And throughout all this as well, the Professional Drivers Association was disbanded and uh, a lot of different things that transpired from this time in history of NASCAR, which I find to be so damn cool. But the history of this car from being stolen to becoming the test car to being the first car to go over 200 miles an hour on record to being hidden in obscurity for so long while well, somebody else thought they had the real one. That's legendary. That's cool to me right there. But anyways, uh, if you got anything to add to this, throw it down there. There's so much cool stuff on this car out there. And I love things like this because this is just wild. Because I actually ran across the picture of the car with the 73 Charger body on it a long, long time ago. And thought to myself, damn, I would love to have something like that. And then to find out eventually, it is the iconic race car. So cool, cool things. And just think how many other ones still out there like that but anyways hope everybody out there is having a great day hope you enjoy the racing it's back back in richmond will be interesting who the hell knows but anyways got some racing going on and i'm gonna be back next week back in the groove i kind of took a week off grandson going back to school next week so i'm gonna spend a little time with him but uh we'll be back on the groove next week here so anyways once again hope you're having a great day and as always we'll see you to check your flag <laughs>